Yo, what's up, everyone? Welcome back. Jamie here today with Dylan. I'm going to be counting down the top five moments from AW in 2022. That's going to be a bit of a like mixed list. Like some of these are our personal moments, and some like you know the media scrum and all that. Like the biggest moments to talk about. <laughs> yeah, like, we're going to be with WWE one as well, but yeah. Yeah, like when I brought this idea to you, like let's just do like whatever's happened in wrestling, like in AEW, sort of all of it. Not necessarily Ring of Honor or whatever oh, no. bullshit like thing they've got, like you know. Like, if it's got the AW names in it and it shows, then I think that's what we should talk about. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'm if Tony's from there. January, January of this year, 2022, so yeah. we're in December now, so, you know, we're not much can happen by the like, next two weeks. And we'll start off with number five. I've got the acclaimed winning the tag team titles, which for me, like, you know, at the beginning, we were behind Proud and Powerful, and that just went to shit. Yeah. And then the acclaimed started coming up, and we we're fans of him, and we'd, you know, Billy Gunn joining and all that, and it. Just led off to a great and yeah. you know, swerving our glory as well. Like, what was it? The first match they should have done the audible, but then the second match they yeah. finally changed the titles. Yeah, like same number five. They claim win the titles. It's it's been an all round because what we've been back in these guys. We've been friends since what early days of AW. Yeah, yeah. Well, they I remember only together. What it went, was like the second year, wasn't it? Like halfway through the second year, they put them together. Uh, yeah, no, they came during the pandemic. Yeah, because they yeah. were at the um, Thingy's place, wasn't there? Oh yeah, Daily's place. And it, was, yeah. and it was still sunny outside when they were doing it back then. Came out of nowhere for me. And I totally agree. Perfect tight team, man. You got the mic skills, even like Anthony Bowens as well inside the ring. He's got a great comeback as well, and you got Billy yeah. Gunn as well. Like, yeah, you know. I, I think it's just one of those rare, rare occasions in AEW where it definitely seems like Anthony Bowens and Max are like talking and taking advice from Billy Gunn. Yeah, hundred percent, and plus the homegrown talent as well. Like you know, very homegrown. AW originals, aren't they? Pretty much. My number four is the Samoa Joe turn on Wardlow. Now, like I know this is not too long ago, and there's probably a few moments that I couldn't put in number four, but like it's Joe. I was liking Wardlow and their tag team, and we were all sort of saying, "Oh, I hope the turn, I hope the drag out, I hope the turns decent, and all that." And it was Wardlow was like, "Oh, I'm going like the every championship." Then you just see Samoa Joe in the back. Isn't going to be one of those slow. You know, with like, like Swim My Glory is kind of having a slow build and it's kind of yeah. to the face. Whereas in that moment, it was like, boom, hits out of nowhere. Very sort of like better than when Hobbs betrayed Starks. Mm. You know what I mean? It was very much, you know, much better story as well. Because betrayed him because, like, oh, you're getting weak and all that. Samoa's like, you ain't taking my title. I'm taking the title. It's mine now, bitch. You know what I mean? Like, very, very good. Uh, and I think it's a great way to help build up Wall up as a you know, rebuild him up is probably get someone like Joe. True. We're still waiting to see the one on one match because they did yeah. the triple threat, didn't they? But yeah, that was a really good moment. I'd, if we're doing the top 10, I'd probably put it in the top 10 that moment, no doubt. Yeah. My number four, I got William Regal joining at Revolution in March, which seems like a long time ago, and now he's already out the door. But, you know, that when he first came in, because it was Mox versus Brian won it, and they were like, let's yeah. fight each other and then team up or whatever. And Regal comes in at the end, you're like, holy shit, I was not expecting that. It went down after that with Uter and Claudio, but that first starting point was so good. Totally agree. Like, I didn't even think about that when I was submitted in with Joe. But like just when you when you suddenly see him walking down the ramp. Yeah. And you're like, like no music what? or anything, you're just like, holy shit. You know what I mean? The match is over. But yet these two motherfuckers are still trying to beat the shit out of each other. And then you just see Rico come out like a dad, like, you motherfucker, it's over, you dude. You know what I mean? Like he's like a dad, he's like, I can't argue, but I will argue at number four, because I think you know. My number three is gonna be MJF's promo and Tony Khan after it was after the Punk match, wasn't it? No, the Wardlow match. It was after the yeah. Wardlow match. And he starts calling him a fucking Mark on TV. Fire me, you fucking Mark, and all that. It was such a good promo. MJF always delivers great promos, but that one just yeah. sticks out to me. I, I didn't choose too much MJF because I feel like he's had such a good year, so I had to pick, like, I had to pick the best of the year for MJF. Hmm. If that was my personal view, like, i got to pick the best of him. Or else it would, you could make the top five just MJF moments or CM Punk moments, you know what I mean? True, is, true, yeah. It, you know, I found myself my own rules, as you probably did as well. But I totally agree. <laughs> Jeff's in like three of mine, so... <laughs> I know, but you know what I mean? Like, we both made our own rules, but we like... Yeah, we, I get what know, you mean. It's funny how you do this. Actually is long-term storytelling. You know what I mean? Because you, you get the glue eaters. You know, they say, oh, it's long-term storytelling, like this, long-term storytelling, like that. But then you're like, MGF does it. It's like, yeah, no, that's it. That's how you do it. That's how you set yeah. up. You set up, put it, put it, put it, setting up the end of his contract. That's how smart MJF is. My number three, because it needed to happen, because I was sick of her, is Jamie Hayden coming world, the 
world women's champion and it was about time because i was sick of the intro shit and tony storm was so boring mm. and it was nice to see tony Khan see the reaction jamie hayden's getting seeing the big pop she's getting with the crowd and not stick to his guns because it's clearly he was going to do that Think. hopefully he learned his mistake with chris statlander he was waiting waiting he's, he's probably not waiting for her he probably is well, she was red hot, he didn't use her. Where um, he claimed with red hot and he didn't do it. And then he waited. I think now we're starting to see Tony be a bit smart with his bookings sort of evolve. You know, so yeah, it was definitely great because Tony was shit. And it's now built towards a great storyline between her and Brit. Yeah, 100%. It definitely is. You, know I mean, you, got you hit the nail on the head there. You're right. Like, he wouldn't change his plans, but then he did with Jamie Hayter. And, you know, he had to with the acclaim. So hopefully, you know. Like you said. Yeah, I hope this is, you know, him sort of coming around to the idea of like, I can't stick to my guns. You know what I mean? No matter how much money I have, it, it, my business isn't going to grow. It's going to stay stagnant. You, yeah, you true, know it, true. Yeah, I hope know, it, that's it. No more interim bullshit after this. That's got to be This it. is the third fucking time. In a, one year. In one year. In one year. <laughs> <laughs> thought, no, no, it's the second... No, Cody was still in AW this year in January. Oh yeah, because he went in April. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> My number two is going to be the whole CM Punk media scrum. Like, obviously, it's a bad moment for the company, and you know, like being fans of Punk is pretty much done with the company after that. But we mentioned the big moments, and like you got to talk about that as a big moment inside the company. Like you know, the elite were gone for a bit. Punk's gone. The whole fight backstage and calling him out because of the news dirt sheets bullshit and all that. <laughs> No, Ditto, number one, number two as well. Yeah, because it, it is a weird thing to sort of put a media scrum, but it is a ma- it is meant to be a part of the pay per view. You know what I mean? It well, is uh, meant to be. Yeah, all out. Yeah. All out, yeah, no, the pay per view. Yeah, like it's meant to be an integral part. You know what I mean? It's like it's it's the cool down period of it that you're meant to do. But it's so late for us that we have to watch it the next day, so it's practically pointless. But it it was just so like mind boggling that. Tony let Punk drift because you you know you let Punk do that he's gonna do it. Yeah, and you're, just... the, you're the guy to shut him down. You're the boss, and you sat right next to him just saying nothing. Either you're scared to say something, or you agree with what he was saying. I don't know which one it was, but you know. I know, and and you could say that Punk might not be right in terms of sense out, but you see, this is where Punk is smarter compared to the Young Bucks. He chose this moment where the Young Bucks and all that they. They do the dirt, they go to whoever, they go back, you know, they do everything backstage. Punk mm. did his shooting right in front of everyone. Yeah, in front of all the dirt sheet writers who caused all this nonsense to begin with. So that was the perfect time. I mean, obviously, you know, it brought the company down in terms of, like, image and all that. But I understand why he did it, because all of the people were inside the room that, you know, caused the problems. So. Yeah, I, in terms of, like, turning the company down's image, I think it, it's the way they treat Punk that's affected me and I think a lot of people it's like oh this is how they treat you know their their, their million dollar you know what I mean their, 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 mm. their WrestleMania Jealous, moment uh. kind of guy you know what I mean mm. like this like if that's how Tony's gonna do it then Tony's not clearly the capable of running this company I'm gonna say you know what I mean which is sure. boggles my mind because what the first two years like great pandemic as well it was great pandemic, the pandemic as well yeah so like my, my only my only thought process is like was it the best we had? So we we, we, we look at it with rose coloured glasses, you know what I mean? It was Vince and stuff so bad that it made this look good. Was yeah, it all I think we... that was part of it. Like, we wanted a different company because we were sick of Vince's shit and we just, yeah. you know, it's like, sort I'm of not... side wearing off after a bit. You know what I mean? I'm not saying like mean. everything they did was great during those first two years, but like, how, there was a lot more stuff that stuck than fell. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, 100%. And now it seems the opposite. It seems like he's just throwing everything and nothing's landing. No, he needs the booking committee. He needs more people to help. Like he's running too much shit. He's got three different companies and all this, and it's like too much for one guy to do. I, I say it all the time, Freddie Prince Jr. My number one is going to be the whole Theon Punk and MJF feud because you know, start to finish, man. That's how that storytelling right there. Ditto, absolutely was. It was. It was. Was it two matches? Yeah, with the TV tag match that he had as well with Sting and Darby. FCR and MJF, so technically three. Count three. That. Yeah. yeah, I would count that because as much as I find FTR, back then I found FTR annoying. Now I'm absolutely loving it. I think that may be one of the, the 
the turning points that maybe lead to like next guy as well. I think it was a good match to see Darby team in this year, but like I totally agree. Yeah. Great uh, feud of the year, I would say. Hundred percent. Yeah. Without, yeah. without hesitation. The you know promos I mean? back and forth, not just mentioning the dog collar match they had as well, but like so it was so good. Everything about it. Like MJF being a young fan and so good. So good. You know what I mean? It, it, MJF talked about how like Punk failed and Punk went down and Punk falling for it. Punk generally believing it. You know what I yeah, mean? True. After he had that massive, you know, brawl with him and went to went to war with him at the start. It's yeah, but MJF got personal, but he? like his his past like, you know, and just when he was younger and all, like getting bullied and everything like that, which obviously it was real because he was crying, but then he turned on Punk as well. It just, exactly. It was so good. So and now good, I don't man. know whether that that was one of those moments where people backstage and maybe, you know, MGF himself and the fans kind of went, oh, this, this could be a face. This could be a monster face. This could be a huge face we could have. It could have been, yeah. Well, when we first saw him with Cody as a face, but I wasn't completely, you know. I, I liked him with Cody as well, but I feel like he, he became... He was in his shadow as, as the face. Yeah, Cody. you could tell he was playing the character one because whenever Cody wasn't there, he was a heel one there. But with Cody, yeah, he was the like, face. Yeah, no, he wasn't. He, yeah, yeah. Like, it's been a while. I try to remember that stuff. Is like, wow, life. <laughs> yeah, like we said, like this whole. I, I thought you would remember it because that's when the chairman was born. Your favorite Sean Spears <laughs> when he hit Cody with the chair, remember? And Cody thought that stupid chair shot and he busted him wide open. I was like, fucking hell, man. I'll give Cody credit, man. He was a trooper. Last match, he had the ladder match, and he set himself on fire as well. Like, Cody did some crazy shit as well. God, Jesus Christ. He must have saw Darby and went, oh, my base. <laughs> he was getting it all out of his system before he went to WWE. Yeah, which is a real shame, because now that Vince is there, he could probably be allowed to do all that shit. Yeah, true, true. Uh, what like, was your number one? This, I, I oh, totally agree with well. you. Yeah, yeah. I did all on this, this, like, the whole feud, in particularly that lead up, lead up to the dog color match, you know? Mm. And every every segment they did, they made personal. But in, yeah, such, a, in such a way, it, 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 it didn't bother them backstage. That must be something that the MJF is really cautious about. Because, you yeah, know, it's all... Because look at back at the Eddie Kingston and Sammy Guevara situation, like, they didn't clear with each other what they were going to say, did they? And they got into a fight. I'm sure yeah. Punk and MJF, like, were backstage in Punk's locker room, you know? discussing what to say because he even brought up his ufc loss and all that so you know yeah but this is what this is what doesn't get me about when people talk about like cm punk you know what i mean being like a you know being like a war so you know not liking stuff but then he's like but you hear like all this shit that gets said to him while he's you know performing you know through mjf or through people who were back to wwe you know what i mean like these things get played these things get talked about you play doesn't care about no. people mocking you for his you know his shit ufc road or you know whatever bad movie he's in so just, just this idea of like painting him in that light doesn't make sense, but you see him not in that light. True. Well, you know, the people, the young bucks defenders are just going to find anything they can. But we'll talk about that when we talk about But yeah, that's our top five AW uh, moments uh, of 2022. Uh, <laughs> five time, five time. Let us know yours down inside the comments down below. Next week, we'll be doing WWE top five as well. Make sure you like and subscribe. Check out those social links down below. Until next week, peace out in a bit.